Kane Land with MacArthur Museum of Arkansas Military History. And I have a very special guest today. Linda Howe has been around Little Rock uh, for a long time. She is a historian currently for the Arkansas Ghost Catchers. She has worked as a tour guide in Little Rock. Uh, she currently volunteers with Oakland and Fraternal Historic Cemetery Park here in Little Rock. And I really want to thank you, Linda, for being here. You are also an author, and we'll talk about your book uh, a little bit later. But first, uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate the invitation. I love the museum and all the people that work there, the ones well, that can you. be seen and the ones that can't be seen. Well, thank you. We, we enjoy uh, your support of the museum and, and uh, being with us. Uh, now, tell us how you got involved in paranormal, because that's what we're talking about today. So uh, okay. can you give us a little brief history of how that happened and, and yes. go from there? About 15 years ago, I was working at Curran Hall, the Little Rock Visitor Center, and a man came in and said that there was a ghost following me around the house, and her name was Mary Eliza, and wanted to know if that meant anything, and I said yes. Uh, we had two women by that name that had history with the house. One built the house, died before moving in. The other one was an older woman and had brought four daughters. She was a widow, brought four daughters in. He wanted me to describe them. I showed him a picture of the older woman. He said, that is not her. We didn't have a picture of Mary Eliza uh, Starbuck Walters. And so he said, she's very young. I wanted him to describe her to me. I had no indication that there was a ghost in the house at all, but uh, that led to uh, paranormal, Arkansas ghost catchers actually were getting founded about then. And that's how I met uh, Rhonda Burton. And so she came and did an investigation and Mary's voice came through and she said, Mary, that's who I am. And uh, one interesting thing this man said, have you noticed anything unusual going on? And I said, I don't know. What's unusual going on me? He said, well, you're looking at something that's happening, but it's not possible to be happening. I said, well, okay. Not long after that, we were having an event that night and I could smell coffee brewing. It was about 1130 at night. I went into the visitor portion of the house and here was our coffee maker that we had already cleaned and getting ready for the morning, the following morning, and it was making coffee. Now, it wasn't turned on, it had no water in it, and there were no coffee grounds in the basket. So you are sort of mesmerized looking at this unusual thing going on. So I ask you, would you have wanted to drink any of the coffee that was being, <laughs> we decided probably not. So I had to unplug it to get it to stop. So that it was really my beginning. She was with me for several years. And, um, but she is around the house because she died giving birth to a baby and the baby is buried on the property. Hmm. Okay. What are uh, some other uh, paranormal experiences that you uh, had in other various times? Uh, other places? Well, certainly the MacArthur Museum. Um, we're there quite a bit as the ghost catchers and then just me personally. Um, I like to use dousing rods because that's a way to communicate with yes and no answers. Uh, we had, tell us what those are for folks who may not know. Uh, they're metal rods and they, they have like a handle on them. Uh, spirits are electric energy. So if you use metal rods, you tend to get a little tingle when you're using them. And you kind of use them, uh, hold them off center and you talk to the spirit and say that we can communicate this way with yes or no questions. And if it's yes, you cross for yes. You have to show them how to use them. The spirits at the museum already get the hang of everything because we do it all the time there. And then you open wide for no. And sometimes they might spin around. Sometimes they might come around and like be on either side of your throat. We call that a spirit hug. Hopefully that's what that means. And uh, so that's how you use them. And you 
Uh, what are some of the experiences you've had here at the museum that you mentioned? That? Well, let's see. Um, recently, uh, as of a few days ago, we were up in the tower and we had this little ball that lights up when a spirit is around. And I was showing the people on the tour that we were doing that how to use the dousing rods. I was letting them have that experience, but I was asking the questions uh, to the spirits and the ball would light up. I'd ask, could you please press, touch the ball and cause it to light up so that we know you are there. And uh, so I've not ever seen anything or necessarily heard anything until we are recording and the voices come across on the recorder, whether that be your cell phone or a digital recorder or whatever, so. Well, other than here, the museum and Curran Hall, where are some other places that you visited that you encountered ghosts? Well, let's see. Uh, there's been some homes uh, down in, downtown in the Quapaw Quarter. I don't think I need to mention which homes they are. <laughs> uh, certainly Curran Hall uh, was one place that was very active. Um, I don't care to do anything in my own personal home because I don't really want to know. Sometimes you might feel like, you know, you hear a noise, you question. I've never seen anything. I have been to hospitals. I've been to museums. I had a two hour conversation with a legislator that died. And uh, that's because he died in 1840. If, and the historian in me comes out because I can talk about what was going on in Little Rock at that time. And so that way I can tell by the way the rods are moving uh, what his answers would be, yes or no. But I was telling him I was very tired and I needed to rest. And he opened the rods very wide for no, as you're not going to rest, basically. Um, we're going to continue on. So, but I've never seen anything, which is a good thing for me. I don't want to see anything. <laughs> and I also want to point out um, that you have a connection to the museum other than just paranormal. You yes. have a famous relative who is important to this building as well as to the Museum of Discovery. Would you tell us about your, she's your great aunt, correct? Uh, my great great aunt, yes. Yeah. Bernie Babcock was the uh, sister of my great grandmother, and they were very, uh, they were ahead of their time as far as uh, being outspoken ladies. They were part of the uh, suffrage movement, and uh, you know, alcohol was forbidden. I mean, you just didn't drink to them. But Bernie also, um, it really started with their mother, my great great grandmother, because on her deathbed, her six children were surrounded with, by her. And um, she said, if there is a way for me to reach you, I will do so. Do not go to any soothsayers, fortune tellers, mystical people, because I will reach you. I don't know if she ever did, but that kind of put the thought into them. So the interest in the paranormal goes very deep in my family. And um, so Bernie, I think because she was very curious about so many things, I have heard that she conducted seances at the museum, which can open a portal for anything to come in and come through. Some people have suspected that maybe that might be why it seems so friendly occupied. <laughs> and uh, you, if you're going to do that kind, I, I do not engage in portals. I don't engage in Ouija boards because there's the good paranormal and there's the bad paranormal. And I just want to deal with the good. To me, the museum is all good. I have a good feeling when I'm there. And for those who may not know about Bernie Babcock, she's very uh, ahead of her time. Um, and she was a great uh, historian. She loved to write. She was an author, well-published author, but she was best known in 1942 for opening her, or bringing her museum to this, to the building that we're in now, the Arsenal Building, and it was known as the Arkansas Museum of, of uh, Science and Natural History, and it was in, actually in this building from 1942 until around 1998. Yeah. Of course, she 
you know, she passed away in, I think, in what, 1962, something like that, but the museum continued. Yeah. And she, and then in 1998, the museum that was here decided to uh, become the Museum of Discovery and they moved downtown, focused on science and technology. And then, of course, we opened in the building in 2001 as the MacArthur Museum of Arkansas Military History. And so she, but she, before that, she actually had her museum and part of City Hall. And so she was very interested in Arkansas history and making sure that, Arcan, that Little Rock Central Arkansas area had a museum for people to come and see. That was actually based on, I don't remember the man's name. He was a, a well-known writer also, but he said that Arkansans were just a bunch of country bumpkins and that was an insult to her. And she said that she was going to prove that incorrect. And I understand that when she started contacting all the museums throughout the country and having them bring the artifacts to Little Rock, that boxcar after boxcar was coming here and that there was just so many things. And much of what I understand that was in the McCarthy Museum, um, when it went to the Museum of Discovery, when all of this all changed about, that many things had to go to a place where there was a director. You couldn't just have them a garage sale or anything like that. You know, they're very, very important. Well, they were, a lot of the items were on loan from other museums or universities yeah. around the country. And, and what the Museum of Discovery uh, couldn't use at their museum, they uh, returned to, we always get, questions about the mummy and the birds and some of the things <laughs> that were here. And those went back to the various locations. We kept uh, the military, some of the military uh, items, we, they were transferred oh, from yeah. them to our museum since they yeah. were focusing on science and technology. But uh, it's, I always felt she was a very important figure when it comes to museums here in Arkansas to really get that interest and, and preserve the history of, she of actually Arkansas. You know, she actually slept in the basement. Yeah, she actually, she had a, here for a time, is my understanding, she had an apartment here. That's why yeah. our break room is sort of a kitchen, because <laughs> it's left over from when she, you know, she lived here. She was actually the director here uh, when um, Douglas MacArthur uh, returned and visited Little Rock. She gave him a tour of the building. Of course, he was born here in, uh, in 1880, and uh, and was only here for six months, but still he was born upstairs in the building. And <laughs> after he retired and came to Little Rock for that five hour tour, he came here and of course it was a big to do. And she, we have photographs of her showing him around. So it was a big deal at that time. So but I wanted to work uh, Bernie in there because she's such an important figure uh, in Central Arkansas and she's a relative of you. You know, a lot of what is in the museum, even today, modern day, was pointed out on the tour we've been doing on Saturday nights, is that uh, anything that has attachments to it, and especially up in the World War I room, there are so many things that belong to a soldier that are up there. And uh, although I don't understand the attachments, I know that in the afterlife, a lot of things that are so-called haunted. I prefer to say occupied. Right. Uh, haunted sounds so scary. But, you know, those are things that um, we bring that up. If there, People think where you died, it's haunted, and that's why. But there is no death at the arsenal or the museum. Nothing like that occurred in its history. But um, the attachments of all the many different things that have come in there, and also the maybe the idea that a portal has been left open because we have people from all well they, they used to be people children are there we've got you know men and women that are there so it's been very interesting place and we are so thrilled that you allow us to come in and spend well, a few hours. well speaking of you tours that's what I, we can uh, transition to that part uh, tell us about your ghost tours how they got involved and and in the past, you've done them in other places. Currently, you're doing them here at our um, museum. Yes. But uh, tell, tell us a little bit about those ghost tours. Well, uh, I was writing, uh, I was doing the tours because of how things started at the Little Rock Visitor Center 
people would come to me and tell me their stories. They would ask me, uh, are you the ghost lady? I need to talk to you about the ghosts in my house or my ghosts that follow me around or whatever. So I was, I was a very good listener and uh, more like a counselor in uh, ghost attachments. But I became known sort of as the ghost lady. And then I decided that I would do, I, knowing a lot about a lot like the museum's history, city hall, people would tell me stories. So I thought, well, our town needed a ghost tour, a haunted tour. Being at the visitor center, many people would come in and ask if there were any ghost uh, tours. And so I thought, well, I'll make one. So I formed Haunted Tours of Little Rock. That's actually my business. And we were doing that since 2010. And uh, we get on a mini bus. We always start at the MacArthur Museum because we go all throughout the museum, just a quick walk through. And then we get on the bus. We rode over and uh, looked at the Empress of Little Rock, which is the cover of my book, that picture. We go over to Mount Holly Cemetery, we're there at the gate because we can't go in that cemetery at night. And then we end up at Curran Hall, the Little Rock Visitor Center. So we make four stops. COVID stopped all of that. And um, so I came up with the idea and talked to Stephen, the director, about people are wanting to get out now. They want to get back into haunted stuff. And so we're spending two hours in the McCarthy Museum now on Saturday nights. This will be our last tour, the 25th. Well, and speaking of that, is that full yet? And if not, can you tell folks who may see this how they can uh, get involved with signing up on that tour if they want to? The one for the 25th? Yeah. Uh, they can call me at 501-681-3857. Okay. Uh, we ask you to sign a waiver of liability, uh, which is just everybody's you know, okay with doing that, but I send you three forms through your email okay. and it's $20 per person. We don't make change. We don't write checks. We don't do credit cards. You give us a $20 bill. All right. You get to walk around the, the floor before it starts. The Arkansas ghost catchers are there and we kind of divide up in the tower, the, uh, the old theater room. And then in the, I call it the piano room. What's the big room with the piano called? We call that the arsenal room now. <laughs> the arsenal room, okay. It's the arsenal room, and then right, the the one right next to it with the tables, we call oh, that. Medal of, that's our medal of honor. Room. Yeah, medal of honor room. Yes, mm -hmm. um, we've had a great group of people. Yes, we've averaged about fifteen to twenty. We will take up to twenty five, and uh, right now we have I think fifteen for this coming Saturday night. Okay, folks. So you heard that there are about ten slots left if you you want to. <laughs> Uh, if you want to jump back in and get on a tour, give us that number one more time, Linda. 501-681-3857. And you have a Facebook page, right? I do. Haunted so Tours you, Little Rock, yeah. Yeah, so you can, they can hop on that and get more information. Also, I want to talk about this. I don't know if you can see it. This is a book oh, called, okay. <laughs> your book called Haunted Little Rock. Yeah. And... It, uh, it is by you, and it's about the second, you're, the second, you're the second chapter. <laughs> oh, yes, we are the second chapter. We also sell the book here at the museum, so if you're local and would like to uh, purchase one, just come by the museum. We're open uh, Tuesday through Sunday, and so you can come by and purchase one. Otherwise, if you live out of, out of state or out of area, I'm sure it's on Amazon, so you can order it that way. But tell us about the book. Uh, some of your, first of all, why did you write the book? Apparently you have all these stories, so you decided to share them. I didn't want to write the book uh, because I was a tour guide. I'm not so much an author, but I am now. But um, I didn't, the, the publisher approached me. They go all over the country, Acadia Publishing Company wants local tour guides who do haunted tours to write about their city. So it's part of their Haunted America series. So I thought, well, okay. And I wrote the book so someone could actually take it and do like a self-guided tour. They would start at the uh, visitor center, then they go to the museum, then they would go over to the Empress. So it kind of follows the way our tour does. And 
like I said, people have been talking to me about what's been going on for years. And so I wrote all of that. And um, yes, it's in Cracker Barrel now and Walgreens and Sam's and Amazon, like you said, and um, we're having a lot of fun with it. And um, if you buy a copy, I'll be glad to sign it on tour night. And, um, but yeah, it gives, it's based on what people have told me about these different places, yes. Even right. Woodson or, Lab. <laughs> yes, it's a it's a fascinating read, and uh, people who are interested in ghosts and the paranormal uh, should definitely pick up a copy. It's very interesting. So, well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, do you have any other projects, future projects coming up? Do you have any books in the works or any articles? Uh, no books, no works, but the uh, cemetery where I work. Oakland and Fraternal Historic Cemetery Park. We started the Lantern Light Tour because oh. people are always wanting to be in a cemetery at night. So now that I work in one, we started that March of, when did COVID begin, 2020? 19. Yeah, 19. Uh, somewhere along there. It was in March. So we got one good tour in, but we go around the cemetery uh, and we're gonna try to get those maybe started back up in the fall or maybe early spring. We've done a walking tour, just something to get people out here where we can social distance, you know, people can wear masks and so on. But I'll be posting that on the Oakland um, and Fraternal um, website, or their, not their website, their Facebook page, as well as mine. Yeah. All right, well, that's something to look forward to. Hopefully, uh, you can get those up and running because I know people really enjoy those. As they well. really do. This whole town is full of people who like ghost stories. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> well, before we close, is there anything else you'd like to share with us or talk about? I just want to say that the museum is a magnificent place. Uh, it is close to me for many personal reasons, but the staff there are wonderful. We, they They open their doors for all kinds of, you know, once we get past this COVID business, we're gonna get back to our Paranormal Expo and all the other things that we can uh -huh. do there. But they're gonna have, what is it, your military car? This we have coming. our vintage military vehicle show yeah. on Saturday, yeah. October the 9th, 9 to 2 p.m. So I hope you start, hope the, movie, hope you start the movie night again too. I hope that yeah, can We hope to have that soon. We, like you said, the COVID is, is yeah. <laughs> changing how we're having to do our programming, but hopefully we'll have that back soon as well. But we're happy, we're, oh, yeah. we're very sad that we couldn't do the Paranormal Expo this year, but you know, next year we're looking yeah. forward to it. We'll be healthier, we'll do it, yes. But it's a well, great, great building. People should always just go walk through there and get it, absorb all of the energy. Yes, it's one of the, there's several historic buildings in Arkansas and we're certainly one of them being 181 <laughs> years old. A lot of history. So we thank you for being a, a strong and supportive partner of the museum. You're mighty thank welcome. You for coming on and talking with us today. And we will see you in the future. We will. And thank you, Shane. Thank you.